America has historically been an English-speaking country, at least for the last several hundred years, but increasingly that is not the case. In 1980, 89% of Americans spoke English in the home. That figure has fallen dramatically ever since. Today, more than 20%, one-fifth of the country, that's 60 million people, speak something other than English at home. Increasingly, the U.S. is a multilingual country. In California, the biggest state, voters just repealed the law that required English lessons, rather school lessons, and public schools be taught in English. Moro Mujica, Mujica is the head of U.S. English. He's fighting to make English the country's official language. He joins us now. Mr. Mujica, you speak five languages. You're, an, you're right. born in Chile, international person. You're not against other languages, obviously. Why do you no, think it's important? I speak Spanish at home with then, my American wife. <laughs> then what, then and, why is it important to make English the national language? Because it's obvi obvious. Like most things in life that are obvious are difficult to pass in this country. Yes. Uh, English is the lingua franca of the world today. Yes. You know, I travel all over the world almost every month, and wherever I go, I speak English. Yes. And when I'm in this country, my country, obviously, uh, I speak English. And uh, if you speak to me in an, any other language, I would answer you in any other language. We at U.S. English are not against people who speak other languages. We're against the idea of the government functioning in other languages like Belgium that you mentioned yes. the other day or Quebec etc because it divides the country it divides the itself. country we were founded by senator Hayakawa who was a linguist and a semanticist uh, in 1983 senator Hayakawa was himself an immigrant he came to this country and he was very concerned that the country would be eventually divided along linguistic lines like Ukraine, you know, half yes. of Ukraine is Russian speaking, the other side is Ukrainian speaking, and Latvia, for instance. Well, sure. Many, many countries have that problem. Well, it's such an obvious point, and yet the resistance to this is very strong. Harry Reid on the floor of the Senate a couple of years ago described this as, quote, racist. What well, is the motivation of the people who are... You just ruined my dinner, but... Uh, <laughs> I felt the same way, but what's the... Yeah, I mean, you debate people like persons. this all the time. What's the motivation of people who don't want English to be the national language? Well, there are several motivations. Uh, generally, 83% of people in this country approve of the idea of having an official language, English. It's, it's, it's some people, uh, not on what is called progressives or leftists, I call them anarchists in this country. We have a group of people, a small group, makes a lot of noise, but who are trying to divide the country along linguistic lines, along sex along everything yes and uh, what we're trying to do it's it's absolutely normal instead of trying to function in any one of the 350 languages that we have in this country uh, we want the government to begin teaching English to immigrants and to help them assimilate like Israel Israel has a system called Ulpanim is the plural of Ulpan if you immigrate to Israel they give you money so you don't have to work for six months. They send you to an ulpan full time, and you learn how to be an Israeli. You learn how to speak Hebrew, etc. They help you assimilate, and that's what we should do in this country. Because they don't hate themselves. Maybe that's right. Maybe that's well, the key. Mr. Mico, we're out of time. Unfortunately, I could talk to you for hours. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, you're welcome.